Hello, Republic of Gamers, and welcome to ROG Pulse for our CES 2021 After Show Special. My name is Jake Kalinske, and I'm joined here with Jeff Kentman, Sasha, and Jerome. You know, guys, we're all very plugged in to everything that, that we've been working on that we just unveiled here live to the world. Um, Jeff, let's start with you. What are you most excited for for the new stuff that we just revealed? So... Um... I all of our new gaming laptops are really cool, but we also have a bunch of stuff um, on the component side that I'm really excited about as well. The ROG uh, Swift um, PG279QM is our first 240 hertz 1440p monitor um, with NVIDIA Reflex. And we also have a new uh, Gladius 3 mouse and Claymore gaming keyboard um, that are really cool. How about you, Sasha? What's number one for you? Ah, uh, number one for me, well, definitely the X13. <laughs> I just got the G14 as my work laptop, and you're trying yeah, to trade it in I, already. You're I, like, can, can I can I have the X13? Hell yeah, please? hell yeah. I mean, you know, internally we've been seeing that for a while already. So, uh, but yeah. How about you, definitely Jerome? The X13. I'm a big fan of this car. I use this car for oh yeah as my work uh, laptop. Wow, that's one, that's really extra. Exciting. You're working on a like a 360 hertz display. Oh man! Not yet. I'm still using the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I'm really excited to get. Okay. Well. Wow. Okay. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. I think the keyboard is like you're really interested yeah, in the keyboard, the mechanical, right? The optical mechanical keyboard. It's really yeah. Exciting. Built into the. Three hundred sixty. Th yeah. Three hundred sixty hertz screen on a laptop with yep. an optical keyboard, a bigger trackpad. I mean, that's going to be plus all the new uh, AMD and NVIDIA uh, CPUs and GPUs. Yeah. 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 Top of Just the a line, overclocked. Yeah complete package <laughs> a lot of cool stuff now the other thing that we just announced is the rog citadel experience which is what we we showed off i was just playing it and we're actually going to be playing a bit more of it it's essentially a digital expo so it's a way that if you're interested in the new things that we're releasing you can actually see it in a virtual environment you can learn more about the product go in and you know flip it around see what the back of it looks like these are all full-scale digital renders of the exact product that you could buy uh, for yourself in the near future so uh, we can just jump right in right now and again this is the you know the main expo floor where there are some various characters that you'll see in the rog cinematics that guy's name is omni but really we're here to talk about the actual stuff that we're releasing soon so jeff we're going to start with some peripherals um the claymore 2 awesome. being the successor to the claymore yeah what's what's the big appeal here so um the concept with the Claymore is, you know, and everybody has this problem, I think, if you're a gamer, um, you don't really use the numpad, or if you do, um, like, it's, it takes up a lot of space. A traditional keyboard takes up a lot of space on your desk, and, you know, that, that reduces the room you have for your mousing hand. Um, so the way a lot of people get around this is they get a tin keyless keyboard or one without a number pad, um, and that's great, but then you have the problem of, that 5% of the time you need a numpad, you don't have it. Um, and so the, the Claymore solves this problem by making the numpad detachable. Um, so you, you can take it off, it slides off a metal rail, uh, you can attach it to the right side or left side of the keyboard. So if you want to leave it attached all the time, um, you can put it on the left so it's not taking up space over by your dominant hand. Um, and it's also wireless for this generation. Uh, so you know, we have a low latency wireless link. Uh, it cleans up your desk, uh, makes cable management easier. Um, so yeah, it, it's a refinement of what I think is a really useful uh, design and a really practical design for gamers. But, you know, aside from what's new outside, this board also uses our brand new ROG RX uh, optical mechanical key switches, um, which, I'm using in the ROG uh, Scope RX behind me, which you can't see. And these things are awesome. So yeah, they're they, also they, faster, yeah. but this wobble-free technology, yeah. like how does that actually yeah. feel? Because I haven't got to test it yet. Okay, so yeah, so the, the ROG RX optical mechanical switches, um, they don't look a lot like the usual mechanical key switch because with the usual mechanical key switch, you have a central stem on the plunger that the key uh, just presses down on. Right. And so it can like move all around that central stem um, as you're pressing. So like, in, in, again, this sounds really uh, 
you know, picky until you actually feel it. But like when you're using that traditional design, uh, a lot of that force that you put into depressing the key actually moves towards wobbling the keycap. And so the ROG um, RX switches have like a square plunger that the key slides into at the corners, like the, the mounting, um, I don't know what you'd call it exactly. The mounting stems for the keycap go into the corners. And it just, it, when you press it, it just goes straight up and down. It feels like, a, you know, almost like a, a master crafted piano or something in terms of how good its action is. So it's it's just it's really really nice. Very cool. And yeah, they what use op kind of, yeah. What kind of switch options do we have? So the the um, initial version I think is going to use the ROG red switches, yeah. which are linear. They're forty gram actu actuation force. Um, there is a blue version coming that's clicky and has a more deliberate feel to it. Right. But yeah, all of them all of them use an optical uh, mechanism to actually trigger the key. Right. So there's instead of a you know two metal contacts coming together, uh, you have a beam of light um, that's that when you press the key, uh, it it's able to reach a sensor, and that just happens instantaneously, literally at the speed of light. Uh, there's not this uh, debounce delay while we clean up the signal and make sure that there's a key press actually being. Uh, entered so it's it's a little bit faster um it, but it's also much more reliable because you know there's not this metal contact that can degrade over time so yeah, yeah it's a really really cool it technology. seems like we're not missing anything from this i mean between the fact that it's wireless we've got these new in-house switches that from mm -hmm. everybody i've talked to absolutely loves them which is really cool mm -hmm. to hear we got a magnetic uh, arm rest or wrist rest rather yeah wrist rest. Um, which is yeah it comes if you prefer a wrist rest it does come with that nice pillowy uh, uh protein leather yeah wrist rest it's got the aura sync um rgb and that works wirelessly mm -hmm. so that's it's really cool um do you know what these buttons are above the numpad off the top of your head because it looks interesting to so me. so i believe those are programmable macros nice so yeah and there's a volume roller above the yep. um numpad as well so if you need quick access to your volume uh you can do that cool no this is a really nice um keyboard yeah. coming out soon the claymore 2 first ever in-house switches sasha jerome is this uh something are you guys playing with numpads or no you guys into that not at all not at all <laughs> <laughs> I got the Claymore one actually, uh, and I actually imported it because I wanted the brown switches, and they were not available here. Um, <laughs> That's what I use. Yeah, and and I removed. Do you use the, the detachable numpad, Sasha? Uh, so originally, I moved it over to the left side because I preferred mm -hmm. to have the volume wheel on the left side, and I love the mm -hmm. volume wheel. But mm. then I was only really using it for the volume wheel, and in the end. <laughs> On the left side is where I put my phone usually. Uh, so in the end, I, I started to just like remove it. I took it off once yeah. and then I never put it back. Mm. Um, yeah, for me, well, I don't really use NumPad. I'm, I'm not yeah. a kind of guy who like, I think it's for data entry. And I think well, in, yeah, some countries, in some countries, people learn to put in numbers that way. Uh, for me, yeah. I, like in school, like we always learn to use the, the number keys above the letter keys. Mm. Yeah, for me, yeah. I... Back in my benchmarking days, I could not live without oh, the yeah. numpad for Excel. So sense. yeah, yeah. The fact that you can detach this and just keep it. Um, I'll, I'll be yeah. honest. Like I never thought I would see appeal for this because I use the numpad for streaming. And when I reach for a when I play with a keyboard mm. that doesn't have a numpad, I'm, I feel naked. I feel like I'm missing part of my my system. But then again, when I play certain games like flight simulators, I use dual joysticks for that dual flight stick. And the amount of space that a normal keyboard takes up on my desk for the additional hardware I'm putting on the desk, it's too much. So this is mm -hmm. actually like something I'm really excited for simply because in that instance, I just take that out of my setup. I almost wish mm -hmm. it, you know, I, I could plug it in somewhere else and have it work, you know, as like a separate numpad on the side. But, you know, that's me wanting to be extra, extra. What, what do you Jake, use sorry, the numpad Jake. keys for? You use it like uh, shortcut keys? Kind I use it like to change the, the, the scene. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I use it like, oh, as a stream okay. deck would be used. I've just been streaming since way before the stream deck existed, and I have that muscle memory. Yeah. 
Um, so, you know, it's kind of hard for me. I use the stream deck in different ways than, than the average streamer would probably. Jake, sorry to be a tech guy, but can we boost HQ a little bit on the volume? Sure, yeah. Um, but oh. yeah. So we can yeah, also that lean into the microphones if that helps. <laughs> that that would help actually if you bring yeah. the mics a little closer to yeah. you, that would actually make a big difference. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, the, the Claymore two, two, the Claymore two is the evolution of I think a really useful concept, and the fact that it's wireless, type, charges over Type C, um, long battery life, uh, it, it really a problem solver for an all around keyboard. Cool. I, I saw the switches can be replaced. That sounds really interesting. Um, mm. So, are there like different kinds of switches, or it's just the same um, kind of switch? And I, can I don't know if it's I don't know it. if it's replaceable or not. You have to check into that. But yeah, oh, I, okay. I think I saw so, it as well. Yeah, but, I think um, for the mouse you can change the click button. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So speaking, yeah, speaking of the mouse, uh, the we just announced the Gladius Three family mm. at CES 2021. Uh, the Gladius 3 and the Gladius 3 wireless. Uh, so we've had Gladius series of mice for a while, and um, the version 3 refines the shape a little bit. Uh, we have an upgraded sensor in there. Um, the wireless version has wired uh, 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth connectivity, um, so you can like connect it to your PC for gaming and you know connect it to your Bluetooth device You know if you're on the go. I know I take my mouse with me. For my laptop, um, and of course, as new or RGB lighting zones, um, like under the thumb rest. But um, it, yeah, the coolest thing about it, I think, is the new um, push fit uh, switch socket two design. Mm -hmm. And one thing I really appreciate about our mice is that you know, mice when mice go bad, it's usually because that main button dies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or it it's just like, doesn't feel good anymore. You know, right. like yeah, it just doesn't doesn't feel just doesn't feel good heavy. anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah, really and like so it. you know, with with most other mice, when that happens, you're just like, well, darn it, you have to throw yeah. it out. And then usually that happens three or four years down the road, and it's out of production, and you love the shape, but you can't get another one. I've had it happen so at least I worked, twice. I worked for a company that made gaming mice, and uh, for RMAs, like um, <clears throat> you would think that you could repair the mice, and you can technically repair them, but once you like want to fix the switch or replace the switch, and you put the mouse back together, it never really feels mm -hmm. right. Yep. So, so you the nice much thing about to replace them, yeah, yeah. The nice the nice thing about uh, all ROG mouse or mice, I think, is that we. Uh, take this into account from the beginning. Mm. Um, instead of having this sealed system that you have to like, you know, you don't have to jury rig it to get it apart. Like the ma main mouse buttons come off, and you can just get in there with like a switch extractor and um, pull that out. Mm. And we include extra switches in the box, um, wow. usually that huh. you can just go ahead and install, um, mm. and then you just put it right back together, and you're in business. Uh, but for this generation, with the Gladius 3, we also um, not just uh, included support for three-pin uh, mouse switches. There's a new generation of optical mouse switches coming out that have five pins. Wow. So you're, once those become more common in the market, uh, you can not just replace the switches, you can experiment with those optical switches as well. They'll have the same benefits as the um, basically the mechanism in the RX uh, key switches. Oh um, yeah, I think for no, most that's even more interesting, right? Like yeah. rapid fire, like I'm, especially I'm, for FPS. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm clicking way faster than I'm tapping keys on the keyboard. Then again, it depends on the game, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. No, I'm, being able to replace switches is huge. Um, these mm -hmm. are going to have a lot of quality of life. I actually use a Gladius too. I love the shape. I love the form of this. So this is just mm -hmm. taking yeah. that same concept and, you know, why if it isn't fixed, why if it if it isn't broke, why fix it? We're just going to be leveling yeah. that up, bringing it to the next yeah. era. Uh, I like the the engraved etching on the side of, with the RGB. Yeah, it looks really cool. Mm -hmm. And the shape, I mean, it's basically the. It's I think it's interesting. You know, way back in the days, there was the Microsoft Intelli Explorer mouse yeah. that just had a really good shape. And like almost all the good mice you can find nowadays with a nice shape, they all kind of evolved from that original shape. And this one is one of those. Like uh, I think a lot of people from back in the days will will recognize. The shape in there it's similar to that so you'll you'll feel right at home um i remember the first time i tried our gladius gladius mice and i was like yeah i i know that shape that's a good one nice <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, Sasha and Jerome, can we bring you up just a little more or move the mic just a bit closer? Even I, closer? I can, I can yep. bump up the volume even <laughs> yeah. further. Let's boost them a little more. A little more. Okay. All right. We're doing it. Yeah, live. sorry. It's it's around 3 a.m. here. So. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, you guys, you guys no look, worries. you know, rather lively, I got to say. Um, but yeah, this mice just, it's, it's, this it's mouse, just the CES 2021 aura. It's we're yeah. bringing we're bringing the we're bringing all the uh, ambience of CES to the virtual event. I think it's also the light, you know, like light regulates your sleep cycle yeah. and we're being blasted by hundreds of watts of LED lights right now. You should be being blasted by hundreds of watts yeah. of RGB lights right now because that's yeah. that's what we're bringing to the table with everything as usual. But let's uh, let's kind of transition. This is going to be wireless, as I was going to say, but uh, mm -hmm. we also have a, a new monitor that's well, it's mm -hmm. I think we announced this last year technically. <clears throat> yeah, Which one's I remember that? seeing the that at hertz? CES. Yeah. Oh yeah. The... We had that last year at CES as an early preview. Yeah. 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 So we didn't. Uh, yeah, we didn't do the 360 at tw um, 2021. The the new one this year is actually an evolution of one of my favorite products of ours of all time, which is the ROG Swift um, PG279Q. And, and when that monitor came out a few years ago, it was one of the first with G-Sync and IPS and high refresh rate. Oh wow! Um, it was 165 hertz, but that so that monitor is just an icon. Basically, uh, it still wins awards. It still gets on best of lists. But now that you know, 165 hertz was really high back then. But mm -hmm. now that we're we're looking at a new generation of graphics cards, like the RTX 3080, can absolutely demolish 2560 by 1440 gaming. Um, we're looking at a new generation of graphics cards, higher frame rates, higher performance. Um, it was time to bring 2560 by 1440 gaming on the desktop up to 240 hertz. And that's what we've done with the ROG Swift uh, PG279QM, which is launching at uh, CES 2021. So that's not what yeah, we're looking so at here, but it's still another model that's yeah. really exciting. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah. I got the 279 or 278, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. So so yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really like that monitor. And going up to yeah. even higher refresh rate sounds I very have the interesting. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. a lot of us here <laughs> chose that one. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. But yeah. It's, it's a really uh, good yeah. One. Sorry for the um, uh, mismatch then. But yeah, the, um, yeah, the 279, it, it raises, yeah, it's. Um, I think it's we go to 90% P3 coverage. It's display HDR 400, and it also has the NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer built in, so you can monitor your system's end-to-end -end latency, like the time it takes for it to process the mouse click and display it out to the screen. So it's a really uh, complete platform for competitive gaming, but it also brings that balanced resolution of 2560 by 1440 for improved visual uh, clarity. So you can basically, like, it's going to give you different results for different games, right? Because the game engine is different, so um, there's going to be a longer I, delay? Or actually, I don't it? think, I mean, it might, but I don't think um, that has a, that might not have a huge effect. I haven't actually played around with the, re the latency analyzer. I really want to. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, I think the bulk of it is in the click to um, processing stage. It's probably not a whole lot of time in the engine. Um, there may be some, like there may be minor effects um, at that level, but it is just about getting the hardware signal to your system and processing it. I think that's where the bulk of it was. Over the years. But you can, yeah, you can, the, the wonder of this, the wonder of this tool is that you can see that. Like you can monitor all these pr uh, parameters um, through the uh, NVIDIA GeForce overlay and just see how all this stuff comes together to affect the, how long it takes for that click to actually get through. And if it's really bad, if the latency is really bad, you're like, oh, well, now I know this and I can take the steps mm. necessary to reduce it. You might right. need a better mouth, like yeah. that Gladius 3 or the Chakram Core. You might have to, you know, you might have some program running that's really, uh, chewing up actually, your uh, resources. So it's, yeah, it's a really cool tool. That's actually sure. pretty cool. Cause I remember when uh, the reflex came to Valorant, I, I couldn't really like feel the difference mm -hmm. because obviously I'm not a professional gamer, but right. having this kind of tool is really cool, I think.
Yeah, I think yeah. it gives you, you peace can, of mind that you got everything dialed in. You know, right now yeah, it's like exactly. people are like, hey, I, I kind of feel like there's a lag. I kind of feel like things are slow. I'm not sure why. Mm -hmm. Is it maybe because I updated the drivers or I don't know what's going on. And then, you know, you have to debug and try this, try that. And you're not sure. But with this, mm -hmm. you know, you can just measure it like, nope, uh, you know, yeah. I'm just feeling slow today for some <laughs> <I'm> reason. <just> <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> uh, it's me. Yeah. Uh, but I got everything dialed in. Yeah, I think that's really cool. And I think games really improved over the years as well. I'm really glad mm -hmm. that game publishers and game developers are much more aware of high FPS right now. You know, there's much more games coming out now that are shooters, and they know mm -hmm. from the get-go this has to be optimized for high FPS. Like Rainbow Six right. Siege and Overwatch and yep. all those games, yeah. the developers actually really pay attention for every new build that they release that it can hit, you know, those high FPS because mm -hmm. that's what the professional players demand. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's really nice to see that pushed up higher and higher. My my mantra as a benchmarking um, person is, you know, you can't fix what you can't measure. <laughs> so yeah, we can me we can measure this now, and um, it's really cool um, how they do it. Uh, we won't go deep into it, but you know, if you have a console that anything that can do a take a mouse input and do output to this, you know, displays with a reflex latency analyzer, you can measure that latency. You don't get all the detailed information, but um, you can always measure that click to response latency. And so like even on consoles, you can say, well, the console is adding to my lag. This isn't really the best platform to play, <laughs> you know, with a keyboard and mouse. Right, no, that's so, that's very true. Yeah. Um, speaking of consoles, there are some some other displays coming on the horizon that are gonna support mm -hmm. HDMI 2.1 yeah. to really give HDMI, you that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the you know, H just... HDMI 2.1 and the uh, PG32 UQ, which we just announced and the XG43 UQ. Yeah. Um, so nice big displays, big, you yeah. know, you get that's 43 inches and 32 inches. You're going to be able to get 120 hertz on those. You're going to be able to get that HDMI 2.1. So really the maximum performance you could get on like a PS5 will be attainable in the best possible settings on these displays. And the other cool thing is they're going to support the ROG desk mount kit, which is we've been talking about how the keyboard and mouse can be wireless. Mm. Well, you can also mm -hmm. just take your monitor stand out, which is something that I actually um, am a huge I, everything's mounted to my desk, right? That's just how I do it. I've got mm -hmm. lights, cameras, yeah. everything's mounted to the side of my desk. I don't want to see the stands. Um, and this is really nice that we're finally yeah. going to have this built in for our displays. Yeah. Hey, folks, I'm going to have to... Um, oh, yeah, you, you're a busy guy. Yeah. You got to jump on oh, another yeah. show. See, that's the chaos yeah. of CES. But Jeff, thank yeah. you for, your, for just, joining us and for your insights here on yeah. these uh, new devices. It's been, it's been great, guys. I really wanted to talk about the notebooks. Um, so, but yeah, I, okay. I will leave it to you. Um, <laughs> we got yeah, you covered. Next time. We got you covered. Next time for sure. Okay. Worry. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Yep. See ya. Take care, Jeff. Take care, Jeff. See ya. Oh yeah, for the desk mount, I'm I'm really excited about that one as well. Um, I want to try that one out. As far as I know, it has a Visa mount, so you can use it with our older monitors as well. I would really love it too because I I, I play a lot of sim racing and the the actual monitor oh, yeah, stand yeah. takes a lot of space on my desk. So when I have to mount the wheel and the the, the actual stand, oh you do a lot of sim racing. Space. We're gonna definitely do a future yes. podcast talking about sim <laughs> racing yeah. because that's you gonna... guys have to you, you with your hotas flight yeah, sticks yeah. and him with his uh, <laughs> racing rig. Uh, with, yeah. With, without going on a crazy tangent about it, I have foot pedals and dual flight stick, and then I use my stream deck for all kinds of commands because I play wow. complex space simulators, but also like. Star Wars Squadrons is a game that takes good good uh, advantage of that. And pretty soon I'm going to be incorporating my HMD, my my uh, VR headset, and doing that as well. It's going to be really fun. Uh, but anyways, we can we can continue <laughs> on. Uh, I know we're you guys are you know middle of the night there over in Taipei. What uh what should we start uh, with okay. here? We're in the systems room. What do we we want to look at first? Um, I don't know. Just just go just, through yeah. the first one that's right there. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll start. We'll start with the we'll refresh. All of them, this right? is the Zephyr Two. Yeah, might as well. We're here. Um, so this yeah. is actually you know I've since I've been playing with a lot of different devices here at ASUS. My favorite of everything I've been been privileged to try out is the Zephyr Duo. And like I I have one right behind me that I could grab, but we can see it here. This is the refresh, and we're looking at Ryzen 9 5900 with an RTX 3080 being the maximum. Excuse me. And, um, you know, this is really already an amazing device when it comes to the way that it uses the space, the secondary display being a touch screen. As I said, I'm like for as a content creator, as a streamer, this bottom screen is like my dashboard for my stream. It's my Twitch chat. It's everything. Um, I've actually done multiple streams with it here on this channel. And I, I don't know what else to say. This is super cool. But 
I mean, I assume we're just sticking to the same philosophy with the, the uh, past generation, right? Yeah, it's pretty much, uh, but you know, it's it's all black now. I'm a big fan of uh, the new design. It I really looks, love it too. It's yeah, really sleek. It's, it's kind of like a Batmobile of a laptop. <laughs> you know, it has this really cool, understated, uh, stealthy mm. matte black with some glossy elements, glossy black elements. I, I really like it. Um, yeah, and it, it's got a couple of upgrades. So it has a micro SD card slot on the side. It has two oh. extra speakers. Mm -hmm. um, it supports 100 watt charging now, Type C PD. Um, and yeah, I I uh, really like all the cool software improvements as well. So um, the the new UI is really snappy. It really feels like using a phone. Like you tap it and it's instant. You know, the response and go really? through the menu and everything. Yeah, it's it's a really big improvement. It's kind of like going from, yep. What kind of software changes have there been? So basically the whole UI, we have the Screen Expert app, which is the, the little app you have running on the side of the ScreenPad Plus. Um, and you can now dock that to the bottom, you can dock it to the right, and that's how you how you interact with it. So it's the, the second display is a half height regular display, either 4K or full HD resolution. Um, and it's recognized by Windows as just you know an extra display. But we also have this little app running on it that lets you, you know, adjust the brightness of the second screen. Um, you can create task groups, so you can basically say, okay, on the main screen, I want to have this app, and then on the ScreenPad Plus, on the second screen, on the left, I want to have this, and on the right, I want to have that, and then save it. That's your group one. And then you can create a second group. So you can do one for playing games, one for maybe watching a stream, maybe another one for Netflix and having something on the ScreenPad Plus as secondary stuff like chatting. And you can restore all of them and switch between all those different groups back and forth. And, and all that is done on the Screen Expert app you have down there. And then there's a couple of other features and settings. You can control all of that through the Screen Expert app. And that is super snappy now. It's like, uh, it reminds me of back in the days when uh, Android phones were still really, you know, laggy <laughs> and not smooth. And then there was this update, Google Project Butter. I don't remember which version that was, Android eight or seven or something like that. And then everything felt so smooth. So it was like, oh yeah, it reminds me of uh, way back when Android became super snappy. So yeah. Hmm. Great. Yeah, and uh, we also created a new app that's called Control Panel. That's super cool. Uh, you can create custom slider, button, and dial mm -hmm. a deck, basically, for the whole ScreenPad Plus. And you can choose where do you want a slider, a button, or a dial. You can reorient it anywhere on that deck. And then you can assign different functions to it, to Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, Lightroom Classic, or uh, I think there was one more. Uh, Illustrator. So those for Adobe suits, you can pretty much assign any function to a slider or a dialog button. Oh. And we're going to make it uh, open to software developers. So if you think about streaming, you know, you can have yeah. different buttons yeah. there that switch between scenes. I need, uh, you can have a I need slider this. to you, adjust. You just yeah. got me the, between the Adobe functions <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and like the streaming potential. I need this in my life. You can have a slider for all the different volume settings. You can adjust that on the fly. You can have a dial for it. That's going to be so cool. Yeah. Oh, man. And the aesthetic really is. <laughs> the black, it just looks so perfect. And 4K 120 hertz, 3 milliseconds. So the 4K panel got a huge upgrade uh, from 60 hertz to 120. And That's a big deal. And from 25 milliseconds to 3 milliseconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah really yeah, yeah. big. Because I, I have the 4K 60 hertz display, which is mm -hmm. like great for doing design work and all that. But when I'm gaming, you know, I want more than 60 hertz. Yeah. So now perfect. you can you can play at full HD, which yeah. looks super crisp on that 4K panel. And then you can go up to 120 or, you know, you can even go in some games in 4K above 60. Maybe not quite 120, yeah. but yeah. I think that's why I'm so excited to see these, you know, the new GPUs, the mobile GPUs, like a 3080 will actually allow 4K 120 to be possible. You know, the past generation, that wasn't going to happen. You were not going to hit 120 stable on a 28. Ever. You just weren't. You just weren't. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no way. Yeah. Um. So, very cool. All right, let's 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 keep running around because we got a lot of different devices here. Let's <laughs> yeah, get something new. Of... This is the X13 Flow, right? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, for, we just got to open got this with right saying <laughs> this is a transforming device, right? It's a convertible design where you have the stand mode, tent mode, tablet mode, laptop mode. Oh, they got it in person. That's way cooler than the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got oh, all of them boy, here. Oh, boy. Hold on. So... 
also, it, you know, if Chad has any questions, we can we can show Chad what these laptops look like in person, and uh, yeah, show them around. So yeah, that's okay. that's really cool about the Flow X13. It's only 1.3 kilos, um, and it's super light. It has super long battery life. Uh, it's super compact, super slim. So it's basically anybody who was interested in a G14 but wasn't quite, you know, like, ah, uh, we'll see, not so sure, maybe. Uh, those people, if they see the X13, I think a lot of them are going to go because only 1.3 kilos and spec-wise, it's actually pretty similar to what we had on the G14 in 2020. So this is going to be really interesting. And you can just flip it over and it turns into a tablet. You can do video calls on it. It has MPP 2.0 support. So for people who don't know, you can use styluses on it, like mm. our Asus pen. You can draw on it. Uh, you can just you know browse through content on Facebook or any other social media platform. So yeah, really cool. And you can set it up in tent mode and, and play games with an external keyboard or mouse or gamepad. Um, and there's also the XG Mobile. So that's that's, I think, you know, there's like one sentence to describe the X13. It's like, it's our lightest, most compact gaming laptop ever. And with the XG Mobile, it becomes our most powerful gaming laptop in 2021. All so right. that's really crazy if you think about it, because there's a RTX 3080 Mobile in here, but with full 150 watts, so full performance. Uh, that's, that's a huge amount of performance you're getting in there. And uh, yeah. You had a question. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, like, this is really cool because now you've got this super versatile laptop that you can take anywhere, use it as a tablet, use it as a laptop, use it however you choose on the train, when you commute, whatever, bring it to work, come home. And now it's your gaming device because you've got the XG Mobile at home. You could bring this portable with you, too. But I think one of the big benefits, at least the way that I would use it, is use this as my dock because you could have, what, yep. two displays plugged into that XG Mobile? Yeah, and two all to you... the XG Mobile and yep. two to the X13. Okay, plus well, you have the build-in panel. So <laughs> that's crazy. Five. That, let's let's just think about the the, the the average user setup where they'd have maybe two displays at home plugged into the XG Mobile with their mouse and keyboard. So you're just coming home, taking your laptop, your XG, uh, or the Flow, and plugging it into the XG Mobile, and bam, you know it's it's your yeah. desktop, and all your files are consolidated right there. I think that's super appealing. Yeah. And I mean, the XG Mobile itself, like the idea of external graphics is, you know, you don't need the full performance with you all the time or maybe most of the time. So you just moved all this graphics performance into an external box that you then have at home, right? But if you do need to bring the performance with you sometimes, that's where the XG Mobile becomes super interesting because it only weighs one kilo. So just to put this in, in perspective, a 280 watt gaming laptop adapter weighs 850 grams. Wow. This one is one kilo. So it's barely heavier than a 280 watt adapter. And it's actually not much bigger than a 280 watt adapter as well. It is like so quite thin. It's, yeah, it's, it's really thin. And uh, yeah, it's really quiet as well. That's the yeah. really cool thing. Uh, yeah, so really impressive. And the, able we're going, the, the, the way we're able to get so much performance out of it is because we're going eight PCI Express lanes directly to the CPU. So there's no overhead translating from you know, PCI Express to Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. Thunderbolt to PCI Express. And instead of four lanes, we got eight. Uh, and we also have all the I.O. separate from, from the PCI Express lanes that go to the graphics. So yeah, really, really interesting high performance. Uh, ultra portable and it's yeah it's very small that this could be great to even bring in a business trip once we can you know, yeah. travel again <laughs> yeah yeah that's the thing like to the meeting yeah and keep this at the hotel room and, you know yeah 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 so you, ha you have it go. with you you yeah. know but you don't need to have it with you all the time right. so let's say you, you're going somewhere and you need your performance you need the full performance but you don't need it all day, all the time. You maybe need it when you're in that one meeting or, or when you're meeting the customer, but you don't need to carry it with you the whole day. So yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, Even thinking yeah, about think... just like on a flight, you, you know, I've brought big gaming laptops onto longer flights when I was going to Asia or something, just because like, you know, I just want to grind some story driven game. And yep. nowadays laptops in general are a lot smaller than my 2015 laptop, but you could just throw that in your check luggage and then just mm. bring the, the, the flow with you and you're set. 
Yeah. And you got the flow with you on the flight right, and yeah. then at the airport. And then in the hotel or wherever you go, you can set up the XG Mobile as well. So yeah, that's nice. pretty cool. And there's a 3070 option as well. And uh, I think a lot of people can also, you can you can either get them together mm -hmm. or you just get the Flow X13. And the Flow X13 by itself is already super interesting, uh, very, very interesting ultra portable gaming laptop or mm -hmm. ultra portable laptop in, in general. And then you can get the XG Mobile later on. Um, to supercharge your X13 uh, when you when you want that extra performance, and yeah, it has a built-in 280 watt adapter. So that's that's the kind of like you know that that thing that really you have to think about it. Uh, it's almost as heavy as a 280 watt adapter gaming laptop adapter, right. and it has a 280 watt adapter built in. <laughs> so oh, yeah. and and it's a, it's a passive 280 watt adapter, fanless, uh, super high efficiency. Uh, super compact and light. So yeah, uh, we're basically pushing everything to the limit technology-wise using the latest tech. And uh, it's pretty cool what our engineers were able to to pull off. I have to say, you know, yeah, the first time they impressed. told us about this, we were like, and it's how big? And it's how heavy? So the flow, and that, is that how a... how are you going to make this work? This is impossible. <laughs> like how this, I mean, it's a cool idea, but there's no way that you can actually pull this off. And our engineers were like, no, 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 trust us. Trust us. We, yeah. can, we can do this. We're like, sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. We'll try. And then when they actually managed to do it, we're like, wow, damn. Yeah. Impressive. impressive. Really yeah. impressive. Is that a G14 next to it? Like. No, it's a G15. G15. That's okay. A G15. I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because it looks so uh, much bigger. smaller, but okay, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Did that's you... also the interesting thing. Um, you know, the X13, yeah. it is only 1.3 kilos. The G14 is uh, 1.6. Correct. But if you think about okay. it, the G14 is 14 inch and this one is 13.6. So the display isn't much smaller. Right. But it's 300 grams lighter wow. and way thinner uh, and more compact. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, the camera's more over here. Yeah, yeah perfect, perfect. Nice. I was about to complain Hopefully about we it. We have a 14 to complain. Yeah, we got everything double mirrored here. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Right. Wow. if we get a little bit confused. We're a bit confused, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's late. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. just kind of talking about eGPUs, it seems like a cool idea. Um, really cool to see the experimentation being done with the flow. So I think that's going to be fun to, to see how the community responds, because this is definitely not something we've done much of. Is this the first time yeah. we've ever done it, or have we done it in the past? I actually don't know. We we did a we did a thirteen inch gaming laptop before, but did it have the the back in the days. Oh no no yeah, no! Okay. no. Uh, and, and that one was a Chungus. So that thirteen inch <laughs> laptop, uh, that well, that was like uh, four centimeters thick or something like that. So it was like a thirteen inch desktop replacement laptop. You know? uh, but it was thick. It, it was really good performance and a really deep travel keyboard and everything. And and actually, I really liked it back then. I I was tempted to get it, hmm. uh, but unfortunately, I didn't. Um, but yeah, we, we did a 13 inch before that one was really cool. And then later we kind of stopped, uh, 13 inch gaming laptops kind of went away mm. and we're bringing it back. Cool. Cool. All right. Let's so hear from the right angle. You can see again, like how slim it is. Mm -hmm. Like it's really, really crazy. Um, yeah, super slim. Yeah, no, that's it's a really, really gorgeous device. I'm excited. We're actually going to be talking about it more soon. So, guys, here at RG Pulse is a podcast that we do every week. We dive into full-on, like, in-depth discussions about devices. We will be doing the flow in a few weeks to really talk about the, you know, just everything, every little detail, and eventually we'll tear one down and see how it's all put together. We even yeah. saw some internal components last week on the show, actually, as a little teaser as we're prepping here. But we can look at the G15 now that we've got it in mm -hmm. front of us. Um, the G15, how, obviously. How's Chad? What, what was that? <laughs> I actually have two. How's Chad? How's Chad? Is Chad doing Does well? Does Chad you have any questions? You got, uh, um, we got the gray we, one. We can feel well. some. We have yeah. both of them. Does the, does the flow have a camera? That's a question. Yes, yes it, it does. does. Oh, nice. So you can do video calls on it, uh, and you can switch to tablet mode and then do video calls, uh, stay in touch with your friends, family, what we're doing here right now, technically, we could be doing it on a Flow X13. Mm -hmm. Nice. So yeah, G15. Oh, uh, I love the black it one. It now looks just like the G14. Yes. Same kind of design. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you can see there's a white one now. There was no white G15 in 2020. There's one now. Um, and I open it up. You can already see massive touchpad. Really nice, super smooth glass touchpad. Awesome. 
it's very responsive very responsive and it feels super smooth you know that uh smooth silky smooth glass touchpad it's like mm. <laughs> when you talk about really like nice. like a clean design this is like the perfect example they, they are yes so concise just like this two-tone palette of colors you know the white with just the accent of the key yeah. color and oh i love it it's really nice and you know uh, like it's it's really difficult and i think our designers deserve a lot of credit for this because um if you think about it no matter what color you go for you're always going to alienate probably most people <laughs> because no matter what color you choose most people will not be a big fan of it do you know what i mean even if you go for popular colors it's like it's not the majority of the customers that like that color. I so think, yeah. uh, finding finding a color and finding a design that the majority of people like and think looks good is very difficult. Um, and I think you know our, our, our designers did a really good job with this because I haven't heard a single person that told me they don't like the G14 design. And this is the same design as the G14, slightly refined, slightly different, but still, you know, it's it's you can make a design that nobody feels offended by but also nobody really likes um and this like i i haven't heard anybody say they don't like it and actually everybody i've talked about they're like this is a really good design they yeah. really like how it looks um so yeah kudos to our our in uh, Nailed our designers it. really cool new holographic effect i'm not sure if we can see it because our light yeah, is not optimal yeah probably not we yeah we need very direct light for that so it's we we have a nano film under here so uh it reflects the light um if if it's now we have very indirect soft light so you can't really see it <laughs> but it's kind yeah. of like the the cat eye reflective stuff that you know uh, yep. uh security people have on their uniforms and everything that kind of stuff um, it's similar to that, but instead of just reflecting the light and throwing it back at you, it changes the, uh, the wavelength. So it, it becomes, uh, like it has this rainbow kind of chromatic pattern and you see those lines moving around as the direction of the lights changes slightly. So it's, it's very subtle as well. It's not like super in your face. Mm -hmm. Um, so it has this subtle, uh, chromatic effect when the light is changing or you're changing your perspective towards the laptop, which is mm. a really nice uh, little design accent. I'm a huge fan of it. And this is actually also coming to the G14 without Anime Matrix. Yeah. So so the G14 without Anime Matrix now has some of that cool, mm. you know, effect uh, coming through the CNC drilled holes on the back here. And the G15 has that as well. Yeah, I think you can't really see that too well on, on this render. Yeah. Um, that's you know, the G14, isn't it? Is, this, is that the G14 or this G14? This is the 14. Like the 14. 14. Yeah. That's the 14. Oh, yeah. okay. So you can see the enemy matrix display on the back. That's the enemy matrix version, yeah. Yeah. Which is uh, a very popular feature that, you know, we released with the last version. Really cool. A lot of... I see we're expanding it even more. There's this neat little happy holidays effect that we can even see coming through. Um, we're also adding this virtual pet. Have you guys played with this at all? Yes, I have. <laughs> I actually beta tested this uh, this feature. It was really really interesting. Yep. Nice. It it reminds me a little bit of what was the name of the the Microsoft the, Word? Oh, uh, oh, the, oh uh, Clippy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clippy. Clippy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It it reminded it's me of bit, Clippy, yeah. but if Clippy would be cool, you know, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like that. But but uh, Omni is a lot more fun and cool. Yeah, yeah spray painting uh, and yeah. Yeah, Cl Clippy was. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of it. <laughs> Don't you ever insult Clippy on my show again. Um, let's let's talk about the colors. Are these the exact same colors? I mean, they're called Eclipse Gray and Moonlight White. Are they the same as the G15? Correct. Look and it's also okay. the, the same coating. It has a really nice uh, touch to it. The only difference is on the G14, this part is fully white, whereas in the G... Uh, sorry, G15, mm. and on the G14, it's more silver. Mm. Uh, we don't have one right now, so we can't really show No, you. that's fine. Yeah, but that's the main difference. Like, you can see it's, like, really, like, moonlight white. Can you, can you open the, <laughs> yeah. the, the black one? Yes. Because those keycaps... Okay, it is white. Okay. It, they just look like a brighter white in the render in, in Citadel. So it's fun to compare the actual render versus the physical product because there's, there's, you know, oh, and, they're almost Also the keep same. in mind, these these are not the, at least the, the final ones. Oh, this ones. is the final one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. We, we got a lot of samples here and some of them are more final than others. Makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it is 
the early stages of everything. We're just now revealing them, so that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you yep. can see like the uh, different versions here in Citadel. The these keys look brighter in this, but that might are they um, lit up? That might be why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's why. why. Yeah, okay, yep. that makes sense. Cool. Um, yeah, two AI noise cancellation is pretty much the standard. We have USB Type C charging on all of our new devices here, which is really exciting because yes. um, yeah. two AI noise cancellation. You know that we we talk about that a lot. But that's like you can if your friend is on Discord with you or your friends in voice comms with you, and his dog is barking in the background, you can actually clean that audio. You can clean his yeah. audio feed. Static. You can you name mute it. Yeah. your your buddy's dog. <laughs> it's it's something that I've been wanting for a long time and didn't know we'd ever be yeah. able to control. So. Um, it's it's so it's so annoying right because if you think about it like people the people who care the most about audio quality they usually have really good gear but then even the best gear can't save you from <laughs> other people having horrible microphones yeah. and not caring about background noise and having the tv on at full right. blast and stuff like that but now with you know two-way air noise canceling yes you can basically mute all the background noise from from other people that you're playing with or having a call with are these um... we all know this guy that's playing fps from the <laughs> cyber cafe yeah yeah from, from, from the, an internet, the cafe. internet cafe it's horrible like oh, you can God. hear all the background noise and people yeah or, or sometimes you're like playing uh, I, i've had that like in the background you can hear like uh chickens and uh you can Jeez. hear like dogs barking and goats trains yeah trains trains too uh, and, and also like Family members yelling at each other, <laughs> sirens, and like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. throwing stuff. Oh, the music, the, uh, the classical, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, music in the background. You hear like really loud. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to hear footsteps, and you know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You're trying so to spot footsteps in the game, do and these, you hear do these have very charge? loud footsteps. <laughs> yeah, the chat wants to see these lit up. Do they have charge? Could we turn turn uh, one on? Let, let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> the black one does oh, not. Yeah. But the white, oh, the white one, dead. it flashed for a second. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, it's turning on. So they also take a while to power on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted oh, to. You can see. I don't know if it's dark enough to see. Yeah, I think the contrast is going to be difficult. Oh, that, uh, you can, you can kind of see the light. Yeah. Like yeah, we said, like it's very you bright can't in really that room. tell. You can't tell from the webcam because it's all adjusted, but right. yeah, we're, we're getting blasted with really bright lights, so <laughs> it's competing with that. Um, and and yeah, but really nice wallpaper as well. Ooh, really, really that nice is wallpaper. wallpaper. So that, that, that's that similar to the chromatic effect that you get uh, that shines through all those CNC holes you have in the, in the mm -hmm. lid. Yeah, similar to that. Um, you know, we've actually talked about uh, doing RGB on the enemy matrix display in the past, and there's there's a lot of reasons. Oh, you can see it when you do that. Nice, that's a good little yep. trick. Uh, there's <laughs> there's some limitations that make that very difficult to do. We've actually talked that in previous podcasts, but I it's yep. a cool idea. But I think the aesthetic of just the single, you know, the white light looks really nice. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we're bringing quick charging to yep. all 2021 uh, gaming laptops. So we have brand new cell battery cell design that allows us to quick charge from zero to 50% in only 30 minutes. So that's really impressive. And we can even do that on type C, mm -hmm. type C mm. charging. And like you said, type C charging, we started with only a few Zephyrus models, then the whole Zephyrus lineup, and now we're bringing it to the whole Strix series as well. So Strix can uh, type C charge as well now. And even the Tough Dash, uh, one of the top uh, Tough models has type C charging now. Oh, nice. And when you think about it, like the, the battery life gets longer and longer. So mm. if you can get actually 50%, you can use your laptop for a few hours, which is... Yeah. Those fifty percent uh, get you through through most of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So and, and a lot of the models now we have ninety watt hour batteries, really big batteries mm -hmm. as well, and the battery life's getting better and better from the components, the panels as well. Oh yeah, and on this one the G fifteen. So compared to the twenty twenty one, everything got upgraded: uh, CPU, GPU, and panel. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you have a much bigger range now. So for the G fifteen, you can now go to a top of the line CPU and almost top of the line GPU, 3070, right? No, 3080. 3080, oh yeah, also 3080. Um, so top wow. of the line GPU as well. And panel WQHD, 165 hertz, three milliseconds, so. I'm really in love with that panel. Yeah. When I play Genshin Impact, wow, it, it looks stunning. 
it's, it's very crisp. Everybody's playing that game. <laughs> Um, <laughs> cool. All right. Well, let's let's get keep moving along. I know Jerome, you want to talk a lot about the new Scar refresh because this is, among other things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely our high end, you know, competitive gamer device. This is our esports device. This is built for the people that do want to be able to hit Grandmaster, hit the highest level in StarCraft, any FPS, you name it. Because, you know, there's a lot of different things that can give you an advantage in gaming. And I think we've been able to cram every one of those things into a single system with the, I mean, just optical mechanical keyboard switches built in, a 360 hertz display, a Ryzen 9 5900, an RTX 3080. I mean, you name it, it's got it and then some. But Jerome, oh, he's, he's, he's pulling it out IRL. Here yeah. it goes. Yeah, we could we do, can an do an a unboxing. live unboxing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I did not know this was happening. I'm, we're in for a treat, guys. So we got two 15-inch yeah, that, laptops that, here. So these are the. Oh wait, is it this way? Yeah. yeah pull it's it towards right. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So we got three different color options. We got the. Uh, what, what's the name of the different color options? This is the electro. Electro punk. And yep. then we yep. have the classic. It's very yeah. ROG, yeah, yeah. Marketing name. Yeah, we got the the black one with a red accent, and we have a gray one with a with, black, with a black a black accent. Black accent, yeah. And for the scar ones, uh, you can replace this part. We call it the armor yep. cap. Yep. You can customize it. We bundle three different ones, yep. and you can also CNC or 3D print your own one. So that's pretty cool. You can have your name on there, or or your tag, or icon, or logo, or something. We can quickly show or your off company the... logo as well armor caps yeah. here yeah yeah i could imagine these being like um you know esports teams right i could see this yeah. being like a team liquid armor cap or you yeah, know whichever your yeah. you know, team you, you like you know that's a really cool uh, bit I, of customization I would like that. team liquid armor cap hell yeah <laughs> yeah i mean really cool idea so yeah this is the strix g electropunk um this is the scar 15 inch no this is the strix g. oh also strix g sorry regular this is the the regular Strix G, and then we got in in is retail packaging. Although I, I think it's retail packaging, uh, right? Yeah, it should be. I think this is actually the the pre production <laughs> packaging, but it should be the same as the retail packaging. The Scar seventeen. Gallop, Gallop is in chat saying the... hi, so say hi to Gallop. Hi Gallop. Hi Gallop. <laughs> so we get uh, optical mechanical keyboard and up to three hundred sixty hertz display in a laptop, which so is not just on a wild. desktop monitor now. Yeah, yes. yeah. And we can uh, again show it off in in the Citadel. Um, the different RGB effects. Obviously, you got the glow on the keys. The glow beneath this will really reflect on your desk. If you've never seen our, a lot of our devices have this from keyboards to systems, but it really does create this amazing ambiance. And it's uh, it looks very small. I mean, as someone who owns a five year old ROG laptop, I always reference that device. It's mm -hmm. a tank. And here you're getting <laughs> so much power in a really nice... How much does it weigh? It's got to weigh more than obviously the other, other devices we've shown off. Is it similar to the Zephyrus Duo? A little bit more? Yeah. 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 The Zephyrus Duo is around 2.4 and this one is also around... The 17 inch is 2.3 if I remember correctly. Oh, okay. And the 15 inch... I think the 15 inch is 2.3. I don't have it from the top of my head. But yeah. yeah, I think the in 15 inch is 2.3, 2.4. 2.4, yeah. And and the 17 inch is a bit more. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the weight is actually not bad at all. Mm. Um, if you compare it to, you know, the other models, it's a few hundred grams more, but, you know, not a big difference. And you get an optical mechanical keyboard and uh, you get uh, really solid, super solid build quality, like... Uh, like a tank. I mean, this yeah. is it's 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 not like the build quality is you know uh, any if it's flexing any more than the older bigger desktop replacement models we had in the past, like the one you have that's a couple of years old. Right. This is really solid. That's what I really like about our Strix models as well. Um, like super solid build quality. Mm -hmm. Um, on the Scar ones, you can like press on the keyboard. There's no flex. Really, yeah. Super solid. And even under the heaviest load, like keyboard you can't feel yeah, any uh, temperature at all nothing one, zero i really like it so yeah. this and this... also this here is much smaller for the 15 inch it's seven yep. percent smaller and for the 17 inch it's five percent smaller yeah okay. it's it's much more compact so, um yeah that's a big difference okay. and slimmer bezels so that's pretty cool we, we should we should probably unbox. Uh, this yeah. is the one that you guys are going to mail me tomorrow yep nice 
Love to hear it. So apologies to the guys in the chat who likes uh, people unboxing with white gloves. We don't. Oh have yeah, that. this is like a thing, right? Uh, it is a thing. Is, I find it a little bit, I don't know, like unnerving. <laughs> I'm actually nervous because I haven't opened it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and and now it turns on turns out there's like the wrong <laughs> system in there or something. So it is still in plastic. Yeah, we we'll get that like ASMR funny. experience live. Exactly. Oh yeah, hold it closer to the microphone. Wait, wait, wait. wait. When you open it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is and as you can see as sasha mentioned you can remove the cap cool yep. you can exchange it so that's really cool you have some really cool easter egg yeah there's lots of easter eggs hidden in there so our designers mm -hmm. uh you know were like hey let's try to make this more gaming culture -y. Uh, and there's Easter eggs everywhere. Yep. So they were Especially like, yeah, the why not? The I can't, I can't see what the Easter so. egg is, I'll be honest. Oh, you have to That's buy the laptop. That's okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, people will see it sooner or later anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think this is blocking the light. Let me yes, let's, those uh, laptops. I'll put them somewhere. There you go. It's gorgeous. I, I really like this, it is. you know, Ooh. neutral colors. So here we go. <laughs> Beauty. And you have that really crisp. Oh, yeah. We have to get the microphone. <laughs> yeah. This is oh, actually this why is we upgraded our mics this, in the studio. This is important. Seriously. like. <laughs> That's a nice sounding click. It really is. Exactly. <laughs> I, I still can't believe this is happening, but I, I approve. I mean, we, we spent years doing surveys with a lot of different mechanical switches, um, you know, when it comes to the feeling, mm -hmm. to the key travel, to the sound. And uh, yeah, we actually, we had like different uh, demo boards, yeah. demo keyboards, and like every key had a different sound and a different I feeling. Feel, yeah, and, <laughs> and we would all go through it and collect feedback internally and also with uh, with some of the people that we work with closely, some, some focus groups groups and like hold it to your ears and, and like <laughs> click every individual key like okay i like this one and i like this one really and, and it, it it sounds kind of weird but you know if you think about it you you'd be surprised if you mm -hmm. hear all the different sounds that a key switch can make um you know at first you're like oh, whatever you know like it clicks uh it doesn't really matter but when you hear the different clicks you're like oh this one really does sound much better and oh i really don't like the way this one sounds and you'll see there's patterns like it's it's not like a there is there's a subjective part to it but there's also a very objective thing like people prefer to have it to have the click sound like in this certain way and and to have the feeling in this certain way there's certain patterns and uh yeah it took a while to to uh dial that all in but I think this one is really good. We went through so many keys. And... <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, that's uh, <laughs> how we reached that desired result. Lots of testing, lots of feedback exactly. from lots of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there's a funny story where we collected feedback internally from our team for one of the samples, and yeah. we wrote it all down, like which of the keys we like, and we shared it with uh, with our product managers and the keyboard expert team, and they lost that information. Oh, no. <laughs> <And> we, were, <laughs> we were like, what? <laughs> we spent so much time yeah. going through it and checking everything, <sighs> and we collected feedback from like a dozen people, and we found the information in the end. Okay. But yeah, yeah that, that was really frustrating. And also the the <laughs> first time we, we put like, tiny like stick sticky notes sticky notes on to, it to yeah. each key to like to check yeah. which people like which key so the whole entire keyboard was full of sticky notes it was also interesting <laughs> like some people uh like they're they, you would ask them do you like this key and they would check who marked that they like this key <laughs> and then they would say what this guy says he likes this key no i don't like this key or they would go like oh this guy <laughs> says this key sounds good then yeah i approve it does sound good wow okay <laughs> <Yeah>, for sure <laughs> funny funny how it works um, all right, yeah, this is gonna be our our big esports device, really, when it comes yep. to the laptops and yeah. And what I think is really cool that is that we managed to keep the hotkeys because that's really difficult to do with a mechanical keyboard because with okay. mechanical switches having those small uh, keycaps is super difficult. So th that's uh, membrane switches. 
Um, unfortunately, they're not mechanical, but it's perfectly fine for hotkeys. Yeah. Right, you know, right. Um, it does the trick. It's, it's better to have hotkeys that are membrane switched than no hotkeys, especially microphone mute, volume up and down. Right. Um, I think, yeah. They're a toggle. They're not, they're not a key helpful. you're going to be mashing. You're going to be pressing it you know, as a toggle yeah. more often than less. Exactly. Yeah. And also, like most of the laptop, you have a, an improved trackpad. Yeah. Much larger. You so have also glass. You, yeah, you can see bigger touchpads, nicer touchpads. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. a recurring theme for the whole 2021 lineup. Um, based on feedback we got, um, yep. like people like big touchpads. <laughs> That's like, nobody was like, oh, the touchpad is too small. It's terrible. But they were like, hey, it would be really nice if you could make the touchpad mm -hmm. bigger. So we made it bigger. And you can see on the G15, we made it huge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, chat's asking what model this is. This is Strix Scar 17. Correct. Yes, 17 Correct. and 360 hertz. Right. And design wise, you have a brand new translucent part so you can see some of the components. I don't think we can see it very well. Once yeah, again, because maybe, of the light. Maybe we're, if we're different angle. But on this side, you can really see some components through. Yeah, yeah. I think Especially now, when now it's you can on. See it, right? I'm not you sure can see like any... parts of the structure. So it's not fully transparent, it's like semi transparent. We can see if I turn it on, probably. You can see some of the lights already. Yeah. Whoa, and you can hear the audio. <laughs> Much improved as well. Yeah. That has a nice thump to it. And you have those cyberpunky lights, which is also very cool, in my opinion. You have a slightly transparent. That looks really cool. Now that you see it all turning on and blinking, it really feels alive. The RGB bleeding through in the, the vents on the bottom below the display. That's really yep. nice. And you also improve the bottom of the laptop this year for the Strix series. Yep. It has a very nice, uh, cool design. I really like it. Asymmetric, but you know, with making designs, mm -hmm. either you make them really symmetric or you make them asymmetric. But asymmetric designs often look like not balanced. I think this one looks really balanced. And yeah, yeah. I can't really put my, like, I can't point a finger and say, oh, that's why this design looks nice and and professional and well done um yeah again uh kudos to our designers mm -hmm. they did a really good job with this one what i really like is the material so we took inspiration from the the sneakers material to design this pad at the bottom so the uh -huh. the laptop is actually not slippery when you when you play so that's, that's really also something smart. really cool <laughs> <laughs> very cool all right that's the again the strict scar 17 we can see in the citadel just kind of lit up it looks Really nice. Are the keys actually backlit, or is it is it individual perky lighting? Like what is yeah, the yeah yeah perky the old perky. perky every device. Wow, cool. Yeah, all the 15 inch and 17 inch scar laptops will come with the optical mechanical mm -hmm. keyboard, and they have really nice uh, uh, perky lighting yep. because of the optical mechanical switch. Uh, we're able to illuminate the keys mm -hmm. much 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 better because uh, in the membrane keyboard you're competing for the switch mechanism that gives the keyboard the feel and the function, mm -hmm. and then also getting the light through uh, to to uh, to shine through the keycap. And with an optical mechanical, that's much easier to to illuminate the keycap. Uh, that's actually the the Strix G Electro Pen. I think you can yeah. see very well the the Easter egg design on the on, on the lid. On the lid? Oh yes, yes. yes. Yeah, the 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 text. Okay. A lot of yeah. So a lot it's also of very specific snippets. to the electropunk version. I really like it personally. Yeah. Yeah, I have some electropunk stuff. My headset, in fact. Um. Cool. Yeah, we already talked about the G15, so it's just kind of just a preview of what it would look like with the EP yep. version. Um, the Easter egg messages. It even says it right here. Or it even points it out. Yeah, that's neat. <laughs> it's just you know to give you that gamer flair. This is definitely, yeah. you know, uh, all about that. But I think, you know, we our designers did it really well because it's not too much in your face, too much like, I am a gamer, you know, <laughs> yeah, gaming, yay, you know, like there, there's so many designs and, and like uh, terms and, and, you know, ways of how companies try to sell something to gamers and they obviously aren't gamers and they don't really get it. And mm -hmm. it's, it just feels so fake and superficial. And yeah. I think this one feels really authentic, you know? And, and I think it's, it's not, it's not like, 
offending or even people who aren't uh who who love it don't feel bothered by it you know what i mean it's it's very subtle um i really i really like that kind of design how many different devices have these uh, armor caps so the armor caps on the Strix G uh, are not replaceable. Okay. On the Scar, they are, they are replaceable. And then that's the different color options. So there you can see that's the Electro Punk, the pink version. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Classic Gray, mm -hmm. I think. Classic Black or Classic Gray. Yep. Yeah, Classic Gray. Mm. I think you have the actual <laughs> marketing name on that. Yeah, yeah. Right the Original Black and Eclipse Gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Because Eclipse it's Eclipse Gray. Oh, okay, Eclipse Gray. okay. All right, that's great. That's all of our laptops. We have a a uh, pre-built desktop. Is there anything crazy about this that we need? Oh, we have the vertical uh, vertical GPU. Um, we're seeing yeah. more and more of those lately. Yeah. Is this what it? So so. Oh, GA thirty five. Okay, so it's a refresh of the GA. Yeah, that's yep. that's it's the GA thirty five. Really cool design from the front. Um, a lot of people really like it. I, yeah, I like it as I well. I really like it too. Um, I think design wise, very cool um it's and a big boy yeah it, it has yeah it's a big boy but then again if you think about it like what it is it's a dual chamber design right um considering what it is and it goes uh, up to two, 240 millimeter all-in-one water cooling mounted at the top um for that and you have the separate chambers for you know the components and the cable management and hot drives and everything yeah yeah, yeah. considering for that it's actually not that big um and uh, yeah, I, I, it has like a, uh, in the front, there's like a hidden door you can open for uh, dual SSDs as well, which is kind of cool. That is cool. Um, and the glass side panel is like a special kind of glass that shields against EMI radiation. So, so it's like a tempered glass, but, but even more special than that? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's lead glass. Oh, so wow. it, it shields against EMI, electromagnetic interference. And a lot of people don't know this, but graphics cards or PCs in general, they actually radiate quite a lot of uh, EMI uh, into, if, if you like yeah, the it makes sense. Now. Yeah. And, and, you know, people are so worried and paranoid about microwaves and, you know, uh, like all sorts of radiation. But then you see a lot of people sitting in front of the PC all day and they have the side panel removed and everything, <laughs> you know. It's actually quite some energy that gets pumped out there. So it's pretty cool to have it uh, uh, shielded, EMI shielded. What's really cool about the desktop is also the noise level. They're actually very yeah. quiet. Yeah. yeah. So you can actually play games mm -hmm. uh, at around 35 dB. Uh, that's that's really impressive. I remember I, I, I played on this one uh, at CS last year. So the, the previous model, not the refresh model. Right. And I was really, I was really impressed. Like, I, even at night, we did the setup, and you know it was like late night. The next day was gonna be press day, and everybody had left. And it's this giant room in a in a hotel <laughs> suit in, in in Las Vegas, and it was uh, super quiet, and I couldn't hear the system. I was really we, impressed. We have one running in the background. We can hear it. Yeah, we got a G15 <laughs> here in the background. I have yeah. a I have a GL12, and it's it's silent. But I'm actually I think I'm getting one of these GA35s to stream with uh, pretty soon, and I'm, I'm really pumped. And just to kind of talk about like these esports features, if you guys have never been to an esport event, I used to work at tons of different uh, esports events. This is super useful because this is you know rather than having to let every player sit down at a PC and have to redo all their settings, you know, you can actually just give that player a dedicated hard drive where they're going to plug it and it's going to have all their hotkeys, all their settings, you know, exactly how they want them. You, it's got all these nice little features. The carrying handle is cool if you're going to be bringing this to LAN parties. Um, I would 100% love to roll into a LAN party with this as like my briefcase and just be like, sup guys. It just, you know, that nerd baller <laughs> status carrying this beast in. So really cool. Uh, excited to see the refresh there. Um, but I don't know. It's also for, for setup, you know, like if you have to set up an esports event, you, you, you can't have different systems for different people. No, like it's gotta be every, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be an outrage. Everybody's gonna have the same system. Of course. So then if you as the organizer have to prepare those systems, it's usually five B five, at least we so got 10 systems. Uh, they have to be the same. You have to set them up, carry them around. If they got handles that makes everything so much easier. And then you can just swap all the system drives yeah. just like that. So I'm just yeah. thinking about like when I used to run StarCraft 2 tournaments, we had, I think at one event, we might have had 64 setups 
and there's like 300 different competitors and they're always getting assigned to compete at different stations because it's 1v1 so like these kind of features like this the hot swap trays are essential for the, that kind of game i know nowadays yeah. most esports that are popular are at least team based but still those other events will return someday when we get back to <laughs> yeah. lands um i i just remembered a really funny story when i was working back at amd in london uh there were still world cyber games. Do you remember that? WCG? Oh, do, do I remember that? Dude, e esports is my blood. <laughs> like, that's my life. So back then, world cyber games, uh, sponsored by Samsung, and they asked us, AMD, uh, at that time I was at AMD, to prepare 512 systems, <laughs> all identical, for Starcraft, identical hardware. Right? For StarCraft uh, and whatever other games yeah, they had. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, CSGO or me CS and uh, me and my team, we, we built those systems. So that was really, really cool. It, it took us like two weeks um, and we're staying until like midnight or 1 a.m., 2 a.m. every night. And uh, we're just plowing through all those systems. I've been, and, uh... <laughs> yeah, I've been present for build and, and, and uh, tear down of BlizzCons and the amount of, you know, devices that go into those events. It's insane. Like the yeah. setup time for BlizzCon is like four days. It takes four days of a massive crew to build that out. But let's get uh, back on target here as I'm getting sad thinking about actual events. We're doing our digital expo <laughs> here, um, which yeah. is also really cool. Like, I think the Citadel is an excellent way to really just be able to yeah. feel like you can get in there and, and get a firsthand look. And guys, just another reminder, this is available for free on Steam. You can download this. There's even some other little tidbits outside of this main room where you can go to a shooting range, try to set the high score. Um, There's Ellen Walker. Ellen Walker, there is an Easter egg. Uh, this is the Dark Hero, I believe. Do you guys want to talk about the motherboards and stuff at all? I mean, I think this is all news that we've covered in the past. The one thing that I uh, did want to personally dive into over here is this experimental display. Now, does this... I, I saw this in this um, wow. this you know, experience, the Citadel, for the first time recently, and I was like, what is this? Is there a physical version of this that you've seen? I'm not sure okay it looks cool though it is cool yeah i think it's really neat i'm just trying to like pry That's information really nice out case. of you right now live <laughs> <laughs> they don't know okay it's it's an it's a or neat maybe case. we just aren't supposed to talk about it well it could be it does say that it's an experimental uh case that they put in here or i forget the exact wording we'll see in a minute and it'll it'll pop up here it does look super cool though yeah i like it i lot. love that yeah. display in the front so concept wow. gaming case is what it says. It's got a lot going on, um, but it looks so cool. Like, I love this. The front looks really cyberpunky. It does. Yeah. This 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 reminds me a little bit of the of the older GeForce graphics cards. The design, you know. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, I really like that kind of design. Um, actually, prefer the older design of the the new cards look cool too. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, the the previous ones I really liked a lot. It's it's subjective. <laughs> We're gonna different. disagree there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You you like the newer ones? Yeah, I really like it. The new design. Yeah, it looks really good. I like this. Uh, oh, you actually have one. I would so. love huh, yeah. I the old one, not the new one yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like Maybe this graphics so. card uh, stand, like the extra support, because they're so big now and they weigh so much that having the additional mm -hmm. support um, seems like almost like a necessity. Not quite, but it's nice to have. Yeah, I, I mean, it's also important if, you know, if something ever happens and the system tips over, mm -hmm. you know, like yep. your pet nudges is over or your kid or, you got you a know. big pet if it's knocking this boy over. But oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Yeah, if you have it on your desk, you know. So, yeah, that's true. That's true. So it, it's it's really nice to have have it for that as well. So and also, if you poke at the graphics card, it doesn't move. Yeah. And it can't cause the system to shut down, right, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I might have done that recently um, as I was playing with Sounds the like a personal of... attack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it was. I actually just built a new machine, and it's glorious um cool well i don't know if there's really anything else to to go over i think we covered pretty much everything here in the citadel i just wanted to again plug that you guys mm -hmm. can 
log into this experience again on Steam uh, yourself if you wanted to come in and play around and see what there is to see. Um, and we will be covering all of these devices in thorough you know, detail in the future throughout our, our weekly show, which is typically on Thursdays. We do this podcast, ROG Pulse, every Thursday, uh, covering all kinds of things. Our next show uh, will be not this Thursday, but next week. And we'll let you know what it the is. The shooting range. Show shooting us, show us your skills. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. <laughs> no. I'm actually in a beta Life version. On the air. I'm in a beta version of the game right now, and it... Sometimes, yeah, sure. excuse, sometimes excuse. Well, it, it lags. It does sometimes, <laughs> occasionally. See, there's no scoreboard on Steam. This would be functional. I'm in a beta, though. You mean you broke it because you scored too well? That must be it. I don't have audio on, so it's like awkward. I don't know. No, I refuse to do this live. <laughs> the pressure. Shoot the, RGB. the pressure. Shoot the RGB. Oh. I'm not doing it. I'm looking away. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. No, come on, you do it right. Nope. Any, any, what, what do you guys, you know, if you could get one device today, which one would you grab out of everything we've gone over? <laughs> Difficult choice. I think the extra team. Yeah, I like attempted set. either the scar or the extra team. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, scar uh, i'll stick to scar i don't want to <laughs> he's our he's our yeah. uh, uh strix scar evangelist internally pretty much <laughs> I, I think i actually want the uh the zephyrus duo refresh more than anything just because oh yeah yeah it makes for, sense, for who i know, am for, yeah for my yeah for who you are and what you're doing yeah 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 you know it, this is like a really random tangent but I love the functionality of the ScreenPad Plus so much that I almost wish I could buy a ScreenPad Plus that I could mount on mm. my normal display. <laughs> like, just like a secondary display below my main display that's touch screen. It's like a really interesting streamer tool. Let's set up a meeting to talk about this because I've got an idea here, guys. <laughs> you, you should, you should. Uh, I'm going to pitch it. I'm going to pitch it. The Asus Pro Art portable monitor. Did you hear about that? Yeah, one but is that touch screen though? Is it? It is. Does it clip on to my existing monitor? Come on. Uh, no, it's not clip on, but it has a pretty nice stand. Okay. Um, okay. And it is touch screen and it has a, a Delta E below two, I think. Uh, it's, it's really nice. That is cool. I'll have to check that out. Because that sounds like a really nice function. When I used the Zephyrus Duo and I went back to my desktop, I actually was like, oh, man, I missed my touchscreen. Because I, I felt like I was missing <laughs> yeah. a really good tool in my right. in my setup that I can't have on desktop. Yep. And so, for example, on that one, you can have the control panel app as well. So the one I told you oh, about nice. for, yeah, for yeah. Adobe apps, you can use it on that external monitor full screen so the whole display so you can have tons of buttons and sliders and dials all right, all right, so um sale yeah easy same app yep. <laughs> any shout outs you guys want to give i know this has been a crazy ces process for you guys and it's now f past four in the morning for you so you guys are troopers really oh, <laughs> yeah i think i'm up for 24 hours now almost yeah, yeah. pretty much <laughs> yeah getting close to it <laughs> Well, shout out. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Is your mom watching? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I would say shout out. Uh, big thanks mm. to uh, all our partners, uh, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, and uh, our panel partners. Really nice working with them. Uh, finally, we could bring WQHD high refresh rate to, to gaming laptops. That's really cool. It's, it's really nice working with those guys. Um, shout out to uh, Thermal Grizzly as well. Liquid Metal bringing mm -hmm. it to even more models now. And, and AMD. we've been working with them for years now. Um, yeah, Liquid Metal for any CPU. Um, yeah, that, that's like all the partners, you know, I think... I'm really, really happy working with all of those guys. And, and it's really cool bringing all of this together. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's really exciting. Uh, and it's really nice working with them. They they We have this shared vision, you know, like for, for gaming and what's cool and, and bringing out new stuff. And, and it's really nice when you work with other people who are also really passionate about this. And uh, yeah, you, you're working together step by step. You're getting, you know, making it You drive each other at that point. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's very yeah. invigorating. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, it's like a back and forth and you're like, Hey, it would be cool to do this. And then, Oh yeah, we can also do that. And you know, yeah. How about you, Jerome? I mean, <laughs> you can echo that. I don't really have anything in mind right now, but <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. It's late. So thank you guys for, you know, being troopers, staying up super late and talking to me and showing off all these devices firsthand it was really cool to see everything finally revealed to the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we'll have uh, more shows soon. I thank you all for tuning in to our coverage here of CES 2021. I think there's even, there might be another stream. I, there's just so much going on all the time. So we'll see you next and, time. And then, Go ahead. The, the next pals will then, well, the next pals episode, we're going to talk about the the new models. And then, you know, like if you guys have more questions, you can then join mm -hmm. and ask us any questions you want. And uh, yeah, for, for the specific product stuff. Um, and then we're also going to do teardown, right? To, to see the liquid metal and Soon. all the internal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. GG's. We'll see you next time. <laughs>